I've got two MacBook Airs, both M2. One of them is $1,200, the other one is $1,000 more. Is the difference worth it? Here's a long time commenter, Svein. He suggested do a realistic scenario where I have a mobile development environment with Xcode running Android Studio at the same time with the Android emulator open, running VS Code and the iOS simulator and running a benchmark at the same time to simulate a build while having 10 Chrome tabs open. Well, Svein. That sounds like a good challenge. One of these MacBook Airs is the base model and the other one has 512 gigs of hard drive space, SSDs, sorry, and uh, 24 gigs of RAM. Problem is I don't know which one is which. I've made sure to touch them a lot so that they both show the same amount of fingerprints. I got all the same software. Basically, I made a clone of one when I set up the other one. Let's pop open Android Studio and I'm gonna do this kind of at the same time to see which one of them comes up first and they pretty much started at the same time. I do have a project in here called Focus Android, which is, um, it's Firefox mobile for Android. So I'm gonna pop that open. Let's see, this one actually opened the project first, just by a tiny bit, probably shouldn't judge it by that. Let's pop open device manager, and I'm gonna start up an emulator. And this right here takes a significant amount of time usually. This one popped it up immediately, and this one took a little bit longer. It looks like it's taking some time here. Okay, they're both done. I kind of want to have a standalone emulator. So I'm going to go to a virtual device manager from the start screen and try to start these individually. I'm going to cold boot these at the same time and let's go. Okay. All right. They're coming up and on the right, the emulator popped up first, just a little bit ahead. It's pretty close, but the one on the right is just a little bit ahead. A lot of times when you're developing mobile applications, especially if you're doing cross-platform, you're gonna have the Android emulator and the Xcode or iOS simulator open. You might not have the IDEs open, but the Sims you do. I currently don't have a mobile app project for iOS on here, but that's okay. We can quickly create a new app. My app one. Next, I mean, they're popping up pretty quickly. Yeah, the one on the right is pretty quick. Uh, I don't know if you got to notice that, but yeah, the left one is dragging a little bit with the creation process and just slightly behind. So I'm going to say the one on the left might be the base model just based on that, but we'll see. Let's kick this off right now. Boom. Bill succeeded and there's a sim and I think the one on the left actually got a little bit faster this time. So I'll have both of these running. Now opening up 10 tabs in Chrome is going to be interesting. What the heck am I going to look at? Stack over overflow? Well, why not? Has anybody seen the Stack Overflow homepage, by the way? Does anybody ever go to the homepage of Stack Overflow? There you go. That's what it looks like. <laughs> Let's take a look at questions and wow, 22 million point eight, 22 point eight million questions. And the first question is date related. Uh, well, it doesn't mean it's the most popular. It's the most recent one. Let's open that one up. We know we have multiple tabs of different questions open all the time, don't we? And we also go to Google a lot. M2 MacBook Air. Boom. Interesting. I got presented with slightly different UIs and I don't know why I'm not logged in. This is a fresh instance of Chrome, but on this one, there was an ad that came up for the Apple store. And on this one, it did not. You always see slightly different Google new tab. Since we're looking at home pages, let's take a look at GitHub's. Have you seen this beautiful homepage? They put so much work into it. Look at that. There's a spinning globe. You can, it's interactive. What? Did anybody know that this globe on the GitHub homepage is interactive? You can spin the globe and look around the world and look at different repositories. I didn't know that. What's this one over here? You know what? I want them to be the same. So I'm not going to click on those little links because they're random, but let's go to explore and then topics. Let's have a look at Android. Flutter is a pretty popular repo. Uh, let's have a look at that one. I'm going to open that up in a separate tab. So far, I'm not noticing any lag on either one of these machines. It's fully usable. Let's go to, um, I don't know, the issues of Flutter on another tab. Ah, severe regression. Oh my goodness. What are we going to do? Okay. You know what? I don't know how to solve that problem. Uh, so I'm going to need to go uh, on stack overflow again. And you know, I want to keep those other tabs around. So I'm going to open up a brand new tab of stack overflow and I'm going to search for flutter regression. Ah, uh, uh Oh, human verification is detecting something odd is going on because who goes to the stack overflow homepage not humans <laughs> uh let's take a look at that first one yeah you know what this might solve my problem but maybe it doesn't 
I'll check Google. Let's uh, let's do a search for this right here. New gen GC count. Boom. So far, I'm not seeing that I'm getting my money's worth off of the more expensive machine because so far they're behaving pretty much the same. I'm navigating the browser just fine, getting my stack overflow answers, copying and pasting. Let's pop open Visual Studio Code. Oh, the one on the right came up a little bit faster. It even remembered the last file I was looking at on both of these pretty cool you know i don't think we have enough vs code let's I'll pop open a terminal here and let's go to one of our projects xcode benchmark and i'll pop open a new terminal tab let's go to uh, benchmarks game and python i'm gonna open up python directory in another instance of visual studio code and here we got the mandelbrot test all right um yeah i gotta be honest so far i'm not seeing much value out of going for the more expensive machine let's do a cold boot wipe data cold boot okay let's see pretty close pretty close i'd say the one on the left came up first this time not sure what the one on the right is doing uh, uh, what's going on folks why is only one of these working and it's always the other one okay all right we're on the home page i'm gonna pop open uh chrome inside the emulator chrome keeps stopping uh at least i got a message on the right side this one this one came up kind of late. They both are complaining the Chrome keeps stopping. I'm going to go to YouTube. Is it going to give me the same videos? No, completely different videos. Oh, this one is not clicking on the videos. This one is just kind of hanging there. Oh, interesting. This one's actually playing a video. Yeah. Uh, kind of getting stuck there. We do have um, a dedicated YouTube app inside the emulator. And this emulator is just giving me a whole sorts of trouble. I can't scroll anymore. Really? Fine. What? Come on, just let me go home and scroll down. It's not letting me do it. Anything I click is just broken. Uh, yeah, emulator problems. Uh, this is not new, folks, unfortunately. What about iOS? Can we go to Safari? YouTube.com? Hey, I got the same video on both of them now. Wow, audio? It's an ad too. Uh -uh. Come on, come on, skip ad. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Hey, hey, quiet, 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 quiet down, quiet down. We don't need audio, thank you. All right. Well, we've got a YouTube video playing. Android emulator is done on both of these. I guess it's time to run that benchmark. And let's go. If you want to see the results of the benchmark on a clean machine, you can check out uh, another video. I'll link to it down below. This benchmark is merely there to represent uh, building a project. So ignore the result that we're going to get for the benchmark. But let's not ignore the usability of the system. So I'm going to start using this and scrolling and let's go to the xcode project see if we can still use that oh noticing a huge difference now wow okay maybe i shouldn't be so dramatic okay calm down alex calm down so yeah when i brought up xcode for the first time there was a slight delay on the left side let's open up the android project focus android oh the one on the right pops right up and the one on the left is still working at it look at that look at that there's your difference right there um not a huge difference but very very noticeable let's go back to android studio and run this build so this is going to clean and build a debug build of focus android this is a project that is firefox for mobile let's go so we're gonna get two numbers and we're gonna compare them against each other but keep in mind again that this is not actual benchmark results let's go have a look at that xcode to see who finished first oh this one's done already folks and this one is still working at it yeah i wonder how much of an impact that's going to be in the long run when using this machine all day long i'm going to go ahead and say that this is the base model right here it's been clearly lagging behind and we've seen tons and tons of benchmarks done on these two they're very close when it comes to isolated benchmark results but clearly they're showing differences when it comes to real world use especially if you're a software developer and you're going to have all these different things running on your machines at the same time or maybe you're not maybe you're the kind of software developer that opens one program and sticks to it and uh, then if you need to search stack overflow you you close your ide and nobody does that you open everything at once that's what we do so a very capable machine this m2 macbook air but 
those limitations of the base model are going to hit you pretty hard if you're going to be doing this kind of work. I didn't even have that much stuff open. If you take a look at my machine, my daily driver, which is the MacBook Pro M1 Max, that thing has a ton more stuff open than this. All right, folks, we're almost done with that Android build. I just want to finish that up to share the results with you. Ah, what the heck. For now, we got results for the Xcode build. 280 seconds is how long it took on the left side. 154 seconds is how long it took on the right side. And I'm waiting for that Android build to finish. Oh, it's struggling. If this thing had a fan right now, it would be making a lot of noise. Okay, folks, it's done. Guess what? 56 seconds on the machine on the right for that Android build. Four minutes and seven seconds on the machine on the left. Yep, they look nearly identical, but very different performance. Let's do a reveal, shall we? Did you guess correctly, by the way? Write down in the comments which one's which. Don't cheat. All right, activity monitor. Let's pop that thing open. And there's the CPU history. And let's have a look at the memory tab. Wow. Now there is a big difference right there. The one on the right has 24 gigs of RAM. As suspected, swap used zero bytes. On the left, eight gigs of RAM, swap used six gigabytes. So yeah, huge difference there. So that swap usage is really gonna affect it in this case. But um, I think that even if this had the two NAND chip SSDs, this machine would still swap and still show signs of slowdowns, even if we had the higher throughput with two NAND chips instead of the one NAND chip for the 256 gigabyte hard drive SSD. Sorry. So there you go, folks. I hope this was helpful. And thank you to Svein for suggesting this uh, example. Now, mind you, we're not even running virtual machines. We're not even running Docker here. All those things will affect that. But if you do want to see that stuff, let me know in the comments down below. Oh, and um, do give this video a like. I'd appreciate that very much. Don't forget to subscribe too.